Welcome back in to The Rock Pod. I am John Gay from Jag and Detroit Podcasts. I am Lisa Bibby with Keller Williams Realty, your local neighborhood realtor. I'm Trish Guru, third generation jeweler and owner of Your Personal Jeweler. I am Andrea Arndt, an attorney at Dickinson Wright. And today our guest is Devanyu Banks from Envision Brand Marketing. Devanyu, welcome to the show. Glad to have you with us. Glad to be here. Thanks so much. Uh, appreciate the opportunity to be with you guys. Give us a little bit about your background and how you came to Royal Oak and we're doing business here locally and sort of uh, your backstory a little bit. Absolutely. Yeah, no, I'm uh, Eastern Michigan and, and Michigan State graduate, got into marketing more than 20 years ago and stayed on the corporate side for almost 15 years and began thinking about consulting and started doing it on the side and got an itch for it once I started doing it on the side and about 2017 created Envision Brand Marketing and you know, I'm now the founder and chief marketing consultant for Envision Brand Marketing. Well, that sounds very exciting. What is your process for helping a client create its brand? I have created a, a three-part model called Dream, Purpose, and Action. And my whole goal was to help small and medium-sized businesses really understand not only how to solve their issue that they were going through from a marketing perspective, but also understand the marketing process. Marketing, when you say it, it's such a big word and encompasses so many different things. So this three-part model really takes them through their brand from an internal standpoint, who they are, and then their purpose, why they do what they do and what their value proposition is, and then action, which allows them to actually execute on a go-to-market strategy that I create in collaboration with the brand client. What is something that most new business owners should know about creating a brand? That it really is your personal brand. It's not just about you in terms of who you are as a person, but what your dream was to bring this actual brand to fruition. And so when you have that in your mind, then it's, it's about putting it on paper, that mission, that vision, the values, and the culture that you want to create for that brand. So are there different strategies that you recommend using for small, medium, or large companies? Different strategies are really based on the brand and based on the industry that you're in. The overall premise of my model really helps align that for any brand or industry. But when we get into it, I really customize it for that particular brand. So it's really about understanding who you are first as a brand. And then once you know who you are, you can then understand who your ideal customer is and what type of message you're going to tell them from a brand story perspective that you've already established through your mission and vision and culture. Now you're going to tailor it for that particular audience. Kind of dovetailing off of that, Devanyu, you're kind of getting into what I wanted to ask you next, which is the difference between brand strategy and marketing strategy. We've kind of talked a lot about branding in the first couple minutes here, but right. what is the difference between brand strategy and marketing strategy? That's a big one, you know, and in terms of brand strategy, again, going back to that first phase and really understanding who you are as a brand, that's why I say it's internal. It's about understanding everything about your business, who you are as a brand, what you're going to represent, and if you're going to hire people, what the culture is all about and how they're going to fit with that culture. And then that story that you're telling internally then becomes an external story that you then tell your why, you know, why you exist, what your mission is, what you're going to do to help change the lives and impact lives from a service or product perspective. And so when you get to that phase, now you're talking about marketing to a particular audience. And so when you get into that why phase, now you can tell that brand story in a particular way, in a customized way that's going to reach that audience with a go-to-market strategy. And the marketing aspect is really developing specific tactics, specific research, and understanding who you're really going after. And once you understand who you're really going after, then you can attract them versus just pushing a random message or a message that you think is going to work. You want to customize it to the audience so that they're going to be attracted to that message. So what it sounds like you're saying is the brand conversation starts out internally. And as you've kind of formulated your brand strategy, then the marketing strategy becomes more external. Once you know who your brand is, then you can best market it. Am I, do I have that right? 
Absolutely. And I didn't use that word external, so I'm thank you for, for <laughs> adding that. When you get to phase two, it's all about external marketing to that particular audience and understanding that audience to a point where, like I said, that you're attracting them, right? So it's very external. It's very important to you know, dive in into geographics, the technographics, how they're using mobile technology, how they're using, you know, desktop technology, how they're using technology as a whole and where they're using it. You know, what time of day, when, how they're on social media, all of those specific things are very important externally to understanding your marketing strategy. Related to that, what about a marketing budget? How much of a difference does that make in results? Is there a difference between you know, a large company's budget, a small company's budget, and really maybe someone like me as a solopreneur who doesn't have a very large marketing budget. Yeah, this is so important, especially when I sit down in the discovery call. I, I do a free discovery call with all my brand opportunities and clients that I sit down with before we even move forward and talk about, you know, where they're at from a budget standpoint. You know, if you have a business plan, that business plan should have carved out a section of marketing within that business plan. If you didn't, and a lot of time it doesn't because you're moving so fast to get your business started and you want to get your website up, you want to do all these things, uh, your product, your service, and you forget that I now have to tell this to people externally <laughs> and I need money to do that. And, and so that gets left off the table. And so I, I say up front, how much money do you have to spend towards marketing? So I wanted to jump in there too real quick. You keep mentioning attracting clients and all of the marketing that you're doing is to attract them. Sure. So it sounds like such a great idea that instead of you having to go out and call people or you having to go out and push what you are selling, that people start calling you and people search you out. Yeah, absolutely. I think that's extremely important because if you have a value proposition that's unique, your business might be similar to someone else's. Mm -hmm. But if you have a value proposition that's unique, let's use running shoes, for example. You have Nike, you have Reebok, you have Adidas. They're all running shoes, but each brand has a different value proposition that they're offering to their audience. And they're attracted to it for different reasons. A person who likes the shoe Nike doesn't necessarily like the shoe Adidas. And there's reasons for that. And they may be internal reasons, emotional reasons, psychological, all of those factor in. And when you begin to tap in and research some of the psychological and emotional and, and even physical reasons why people choose your running shoe, then you're beginning to carve out a specific audience for that particular running shoe. And so Nike has their particular audience that's attracted to their shoe. And they know that audience and they nurture that relationship because they've gained that trust and the value from that particular audience. Well, thanks, Devon, you. Absolutely. So what is one of the most fun marketing projects that you have worked on? Oh, wow. So I'm going to use a corporate and a entrepreneur one. You know, the corporate one really quick was um, Hilton. Uh, I had an opportunity to move from automotive and some non-automotive brands when I was working at GTB here in Michigan and then moved over to Organic and started working on Hilton and got the opportunity to work with Apple and develop a new ad that used the gyroscope that was very new to the Apple phone at that time and create this interactive brand experience that gained a lot of momentum and attracted a lot of customers, but also gained a lot of media and industry recognition for what I developed with Apple in conjunction with some employees that I was working with and leading at that agency. And then my first client, actually it was my second client, my second client that I worked with uh, a partner on, a retail client, was a great experience because it was a second client, but it was my biggest client. We were able to completely rebrand their entire company. They were an outlet company that needed to really change their marketing strategy because they were a mile away from another outlet. They'd been there for 25 years and they really needed to change who they were as a brand because they hadn't done any rebranding or revitalization of their brand for 25 years. So it was so important for us to be a partner and it was just a 
it's just fun being able to work with them and completely rebrand them and help them attract customers that they had had and new customers that they were looking to attract by giving them a completely different uh, brand strategy. So some of the best and most successful entrepreneurs that I know have a true passion for their business. So I just want to know why you chose marketing, what's your passion for it, and what's your favorite part about your business? The one-on-one is what I found really um, the connection between people. I, I love being around people and I love encouraging people. I believe that's one of my gifts is encouraging people. And so marketing really taps into that gift of mine, but also gives me the opportunity to connect with other people. And so, you know, when I started in marketing, I don't know if you guys remember Michael J. Fox, The Secret of My Success. He started in in the mailroom and moved his way up and all of that stuff. And so that was one of my inspirations in Melrose Place and all of these movies and shows that really inspired me that marketing was this cool, interactive, people, person type industry. And that's what really drew me to it. And at first it started off, you know, I kind of started in the mailroom. I started, you know, trafficking to each department. You know, I started at the very bottom and moved my way up. And um, had a similar story to that movie and just enjoyed the interactivity, connecting with different people, uh, the sales side of things, working with big companies like Google and Microsoft. All of those things were, um, you know, part of the dream that I had when I thought about getting into the marketing industry. What changes have you seen over the last year as most of us have been virtual and a lot of us have been working from home and we've seen this shift away from in-person to online? What changes have you noticed with clients when it comes to marketing and what struggles and successes have you seen? The biggest thing I've seen is people really trying to adjust to not being able to be in person um, on both sides of the fence. You know, being an entrepreneur or being a brick and mortar business, but also being on the client side and realizing that you have to pivot and find creative ways to continue to attract your audience, your customers. And, you know, on my side of the fence, I've always been an in-home entrepreneur, remote entrepreneur. And so the adjustment for me was not huge. I was already used to Zoom. I was already used to communicating in that way if I needed to, but not being able to actually meet with people in person, go out on lunches and things like that, that was tough. You know, that transition over, you know, the first couple of months, you're like, yeah, I can do this. But when it started to get into that six month, seven month, eight month situation, it was tough to not being able to connect because that's part of my personality, as I said before, is really connecting with other people. And so that's been tough. And so I've really relied on connecting with people over Zoom and uh, made a point to have those first discovery calls and connect with people. But in terms of businesses, I think the advertising piece is really, you know, push people to be more digital, right? Like to get on digital, make sure their website is up to date, be more active on social media. I saw gyms become extremely active on social media and classes and things of that nature. So it's really been interesting to see how people are leveraging technology now because they have to versus, you know, doing it at their own peril, right? So with everybody online so much, have you seen trends in programmatic advertising where somebody's being targeted based on their internet history or for those that us that think our phones are always listening to us, you know, what we're talking about with your spouse in the living room while you're watching TV or what shows you're watching? Have you seen an increase in that sort of targeted advertising? Yeah, I have, but it's funny because I've been in that world for so long, like programmatic, you know, network advertising. I like grew up in that whole era of it coming to fruition, right? Like digital, I grew up in the era of digital coming to life, visiting dealerships and letting them know that, yes, your TV ads are still good, but we have this double-edged sword where you're going to be able to see your advertising, but also measure it and see the analytics behind how it's working. And so programmatic has been around for a lot longer than even, I think a lot of the bigger businesses, you know, the Coca-Colas and the Hiltons of the world knew about it, where now the medium and the smaller businesses are realizing that it's something that can be very effective for them. But I think what I've seen most, most often is people realizing that their websites are so much more important. So the paid search and the SEO has been, you know, I've seen an uptick in people realizing that 
you know, those things are huge along with social media. I think everybody thought you could be passive on social media <laughs> and you can, but again, you get what you put out, right? And content has taken an uptick as well, especially with entrepreneurs realizing they have to get themselves out there, like developing consistent content and being consistent with your brand message and things of that nature. People are realizing that that is such a big, big part of it. And you've got the Gary V's and the, the folks out there definitely letting people know that that's extremely important and, and understanding each platform for what they can provide you, you know, whether it be social media, paid search or programmatic. Perhaps on a little smaller scale, but I think also marketing ourselves through the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce is so helpful. I've actually gotten a lot of clients and given a lot of business to members. And I met Devon Yu at a online Euchre tournament. So we broke up in little rooms and we had some chat time as I'm beating everyone at Euchre. So it was it was a great time for all. <laughs> Absolutely. Especially for you, apparently, Andrea. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Andrea's a secret card shark. She is. Yeah. <laughs> now everyone knows my secret. Darn it. <laughs> yeah. No, there's been some creative things that have happened with, you know, Zoom and, and things of that nature. And I've played trivia on Zoom. I played Euchre online. I've done multiple things online that I normally would not do um, to just engage and, and network with different folks. So it's been great to hear so much about your business, Devon Yu, and I'm curious to get to know you a little bit more. So do you have any favorite hobbies that you do when you're not working? I do. Um, I draw. Cool. <laughs> That's actually my undergrad. I was a fine arts major, so I really like art. Um, I don't draw as much as I would like to but I also love music. And then I'm, I'm a huge sports fan. I played sports in college. I played soccer in college. And so I still try to stay active. So my biggest uh, hobbies are exercise, probably. You know, that's an everyday thing for me. Everything from, you know, hit exercises to yoga. But I also do uh, beach volleyball, adult beach volleyball with my wife, actually. And we enjoy doing that in the summer. And now it's time for our fishbowl question of the day. We pull a totally random question for you. Trish, can you pull the fishbowl question of the day? <laughs> if you could be a rock star, who would you be? Oh my goodness. That is awesome. I love this question because that's one of my dreams because I love music. It's like <laughs> being a rock star. Um to be honest with you, this is going to sound super cheesy and, you know, I'm rolling with it because, you know, I loved Boys to Men. I'm not going to lie. I loved NSYNC. I'd love to be in a boy band like <laughs> that, you know, take me back several decades in terms of my age. But yeah, I would, you know, that was one of my dreams back in the day. New Edition, you know, was my first, you know, back in the day. How much thought have you put into this? If you, Do you have a name for said boy band, I wonder? I, 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 to be honest with you, like honest and truly... We actually went after it at two points in my life, very casually, Okay, but I did. I did it with my cousin and my one of my best friends, and I'm originally from Canada, so I, one of my best friends in Toronto, so we went after it at one point, but we, we weren't real serious about it. We just kind of did it in the basement and whatnot, and did one performance live. And so what were your names? Uh, but then I, I, I tried it again with a couple of friends that I was um, in the entertainment business with. I have this secret life in the modeling and acting world. And I had a couple of friends that I worked with that wanted to do the whole boy band thing too. And so we gave it a shot for a hot minute and did some producing, but it didn't fly. What was the name? What was the name? <laughs> we didn't even have a name yet. Like we were just, we were just <laughs> kind of putting it together and seeing if it would work, but it, it didn't work. I can't even sing that well at all. Like I'm a good choir singer. But I'm not, <laughs> by any means, am I not, I'm not a solo singer. Wait a minute. You mentioned something about a secret life. It sounds like we're going to have to have you back on to disclose <laughs> all the details about your secret life. <laughs> uh, You're going to have to strike a modeling pose for us. <laughs> yeah. So well, you, curious, you said you were a musician starting up these bands. What kind of instruments did you play? I didn't play any. Oh, you were the singer. No, it's always been about wanting to sing. Like, I love music. I love singing. You know, hence the boy band, right? So, you know. Are you going to sing us one of your songs? I can't sing. I'm telling you, I'm, <laughs> I'm not a good singer. Put me in a choir and I'm, I'm fine. But 
you know, every so often I'll sing, you know, Stevie Wonder, happy birthday to you. <laughs> happy. You know, that that's as good as you're going to get, you know? <laughs> <laughs> That's fantastic. Love it. I like this idea of a follow-up podcast with Devon Yu, you know, after he wins his EGOT, because he is apparently like a triple or a quadruple threat at this point, <laughs> singing, acting, dancing, marketing. So I'll use a boy band reference, Devon Yu, and I'll say that for a future episode, I want you back. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I love it. I forgot that I'm a dancer as well. I love dancing. That I can do. <laughs> Excellent. <laughs> That'll be it when we do one of our live events once they start coming back, because it won't become through as well on the podcast as nice, the singing does. Nice, but nice. Devonu Banks of Envision Brand Marketing, it's been really great getting to know you on the Rock Pod today. Where can people find you, your company, and learn more about you? Absolutely. Thanks so much, everyone. Like you said, Devonu Banks, Envision Brand Marketing, you can find me at envisionbrandmarketing.com is the website. I am also on all social media channels, uh, Instagram, Twitter, Facebook, and LinkedIn. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn, uh, Devon Banks. the spelling, D-A-V-A-U-G-H-N-U, Banks, B-A-N-K-S. Um, Envision Brand Marketing, look me up. I'm definitely <laughs> easy to find. Thank you guys so much for the opportunity to be on the show. Thank you so much, Devon Yu. This has been totally entertaining. <laughs> uh, my name is Lisa Bibby, and I am a realtor with KW Advantage. I put the real back in realtor. And you can count on me to be your guide to writing a winning offer in this crazy hot market. You can find me on Facebook, LinkedIn, YouTube, and Instagram at Sold by Lisa B. I'm John Gay from Jaggy Detroit Podcasts for help creating a podcast or improving your existing show. You can find me at jagindetroit.com or on social at jagindetroit. My name is Andrea Arndt. I'm an intellectual property attorney at Dickinson Wright and help my clients protect their inventions and build their brands. You can find me on LinkedIn and on our website, www.dickinsonwright.com. I'm Trish Carruth from Your Personal Jeweler. I specialize in creating unique custom engagement rings and wedding bands. You can find me on Instagram and Facebook at The Personal Jeweler. We want to thank you for checking out this edition of The Rock Pod presented by the Royal Oak Chamber of Commerce. You can follow the podcast on Apple, Spotify, or wherever you get your podcasts. And for more information on the Royal Oak Michigan Chamber of Commerce, just go to royaloakchamber.com. Thanks, everyone.